Support our ministry today by liking this video and hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and follow our Facebook page for more inspiration. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School lesson. My name is Reverend Theron L. Jones I and I'm an Associate Minister at the Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church located in Chicago, Illinois, where our pastor is the Reverend Kevin Wilkes. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, teach me your ways that I might be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, and thank God. <laughs> Our lesson for today is entitled, The Faith in Action Preacher. And our background scripture comes from the book of Ezra, chapters 9 and 10. And the key verse or the memory thought is Ezra chapter 10, verse 6, which reads thusly. Then Ezra rose up from before the house of God and went into the chamber of jo Johanna, the son of Elizabeth, and when he came thither, he did eat no bread nor drink water, for he mourned because of the transgressions of them that had been carried away. Now, our quarterly theme continues to be Prophets Faithful to God, Covenant. And Unit 2 for April theme is prophets of restoration. A pastor or a preacher, when they are, when they realize there are problems within the flock God has entrusted them to or her with the entire congregation or with some of the people in the congregation that have strayed from the commandments of God, the man or the woman of God must go to God in prayer to ask for instructions how to lead God's people back to good standing with him, with him. And Ezra prayed on behalf of the people of Israel for their sins against the Lord. Verse 1a. Because he led by example, he said, and when Ezra had prayed, and when he had confessed, weeping, and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. And casting himself down in the temple, that showed humility. When you cast yourself down in front of the Lord, and prostrate yourself. That shows humility. And the people in 1B followed the example of Ezra, the leader. Ezra was a scribe. He was an expert of the law of Moses. Ezra chapter 7, verse 6. And he also confessed to God on behalf of the people. And it started the process of restoration with God. One of the men's, Sheha Nia, admitted to Ezra that him and the other man is his father, had trespassed, they had sinned against God by marrying women that were not Jewish. And, and that's verse 2a. One of the commandments by God was that the men of Israel would take no strange women as wives because the strange women, not all, but most of the times, worship and promoted pagan gods. And that's what a little g. And the people still had hope because of God's demonstration of grace and mercy time and time again, when Israel had previously 
turned from God and disobeyed him. Verse 2 say, And Shenaniah, the son of Jael, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. And, and the men now, in verse 3, they renew their covenant with God to do as God has commanded them to do, leaving their wives and children behind. It says, now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such as are born of them, according to the counsel of my Lord, and of those that tremble at the commandments of our God, and let it be done according to the law. Arise means to go from intent, which means conviction. You've been convicted that you was wrong. To action, to actually take the action that is required, which in this case is leaving behind their wives, their children, and all else that they had had with these families. This had to be extremely difficult. But God said, be of good courage. Verse 4, arise for this matter belongeth unto thee. We also will be with thee. Be of good courage and do it. And, and just do it. <laughs> To ensure that all parties are on the same page, Ezra had all of Israel make a covenant. They sw to swear to God in verse 5 to take the necessary actions to restore what God. Now, Ezra, verse 6, the main thought. Ezra withdraws from the people to be alone at the home of two Levites. We don't know if they was priests because all priests was Levites, but all Levites were not priests. Ezra was overwhelmed with grief on behalf of the people and went into immediate fast because he reflected on the many years Israel had wasted chasing false gods and denying God. This covenant was proclaimed throughout all of Israel, probably on behalf by the, by the chief priests and Levites, verse seven to eight in this lesson. And they all would come to Jerusalem within three days or lose everything, which meant they would no longer be able to live among God's people. And they would have to, just as the wives and children, they'd have to walk away from. They'd lose everything. Doing this captivity only two tribes in this lesson Judah which is the royal tribe which is the tribe that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ comes from that's why he called the Lion of Judah and Benjamin were able to answer this call because the other ten tribes were still in exile in Assyria and this time of the year, the weather would have been cold and rainy. They were trembling in verse, they were trembling for two reasons in the street. Because of their sins and because of the weather. Verse 9, then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered to themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month which is December now, on the 20th day of the month, and all the people sat in the streets of the house of God 
trembling because of this matter and for the great rain. Verse 10 Ezra now is acting as a priest and he reemphasizes the sins the people have committed against God because instead of working to decrease sin, to decrease sin, they had increased sin on behalf of the people. You know, confession is not only just good for the soul. Confession is the first step, step toward repentance. When you confess, you admit that you was wrong. And verse 11 say, Now therefore make confessions unto the Lord God of your fathers, and do his pleasure and separate yourself from the people of the land and from the strange wives. First, confession is the first step toward repentance. The second is to do the will of God, his pleasure, which he commanded in the first place. If the people had followed God's commandments, they would have never wound up in this situation. And in the final lesson, verse of this lesson, which reads, then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, as thou hast said, so must we do. The people all come together in agreement, touching and agreeing to do God's will. Verse 1. And we know it says in God's word, when two or three are gathered together in my name, I shall be in the midst. And if the whole congregation is touching and agreeing, think of the power that comes from coming together in the name of Jesus. And as we wrap this lesson up, it takes a faith in action man of God. Because faith is not idle. Our faith should be constantly working and through our actions, it should show the faith that we have in God. And in order to lead God people, you got to be a man of faith and action, man of God. To bring the people back to God when they have strayed. First and foremost, as a faith and action man of God, you must be or she must be in right standings himself to set the proper example for the people to follow, just as Ezra. He must be prayed up and led by the Spirit of God to restore the people back to God. The leader must have a heart for the people and have the heart to feel the pain and shame that they are feeling. And when you feel, when you can put yourself in the shoes of the people, this allows the man of God to carry the people's burden to God as if it was his very own all by himself or herself. And once again, we thank you for being a part of our Sunday school lesson on behalf of our pastor of the Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church located in Chicago, Illinois, Reverend Kevin Wilkes. Let us pray our way out. God bless and God keep us all. Amen. Thank, God. Thank you for joining us today. We hope and pray that this Sunday school lesson has made you want to learn just a little bit more about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why don't you join us for our Sunday school at 10 o'clock, morning worship at 1130. We look forward to seeing you there. Until then, tell somebody you love them.